Hi, Steve here from photomasteryclub.com and in this Photoshop tutorial I'm going to show you something you can do to slightly adjust and alter the composition of your photos after you've taken them. Now this isn't going to be one for the purest photographer because it's going to be a little bit of manipulation so you know the result that we're going to end up with isn't the uh, you know the strictly uh, realistic scene uh, or the strictly realistic rendition of the scene that we captured but you know for me at the end of the day if it results in a better looking image then personally I don't mind making these kind of adjustments so you know if, if you have the same attitude then yeah hopefully you'll enjoy this uh, tip now just one other thing actually <laughs> on that uh, on that subject is you know if you're going to use this on landmarks or like for example mountains that are highly recognizable and you start adjusting the shape and position of them then you know just watch out uh, that you don't go too far and and cause people to sort of notice that things don't quite look right you know with those easily recognizable objects um, but you know for, for a shot like this I mean nobody knows what this green mossy rock really looks like <laughs> in uh, in the water so you know it's uh, it's sort of fair game really uh, for for a shot like this. So anyway, I'll show you how to uh, how to do this, and then you can use it at your discretion. Uh, yeah, so let's crack on. Now, what we're actually going to be using is uh, the warp transform tool. So what we need to do, the first thing that we need to do is just create a duplicate of our background. You could do this on your background uh, layer, but I always like to have a backup in case things go horribly wrong and I just have to delete uh, what I've done so yeah I'll create a background uh, copy and then from the uh, edit menu you're going to choose transform and then warp now from this point on there's not really like a step-by-step -step, um, set of instructions where I can say do this do this and do this one two three um, you know really it's just going to come down to playing around and shifting things around and seeing how it looks so you know I'll, I'll show you an example uh, on this image to uh, to get you started and then you know hopefully that can kickstart some ideas in your own mind for your own shots so the problem that I see with this image is that well and I was aware of it when I was taking it actually is that this rock is uh, just too close to the center you know there's a massive gap of uh, empty space under uh, under that rock as it appears in the frame so what I really would like to have done is to get a composition where this rock was you know closer to the bottom of the frame but due to how the water was and where I could put my tripod that was actually impossible so this is what I had to put up with uh, so the first thing I want to do is just move this rock down towards the bottom of the uh, of the frame so I can start off doing that just by clicking on this uh, in this center kind of uh, square oblong shape and just literally start dragging it down and then I can also grab these other uh, corners here and just do the same thing and move down now it's kind of you know it's gonna be it's a process of like nudging things around and you know trial and error there's a lot of trial and error <laughs> um, but you know what I'm just going to try to do is um, you know bring this bring this down whilst trying to keep a uh, as close a shape to the original shape as possible um, so yeah that's the first kind of control that you can do is uh, just click and drag one of these squares uh, inside the image but if you look around the sides of the uh, of the uh, you know, the frame here we've got these little circles these little control points here which you can actually click and drag those to kind of fine-tune any movement and any adjustments so you know I can use this one here to just pull that bottom corner down a bit more and same with this one I can stretch it back this way and then up here you might have noticed as I was doing all of this the uh, the horizon went a bit wonky and started to get a bit um, distorted so you can kind of repair and fix any issues up in the top half of the frame uh, in a similar manner 
So here I'm just moving things around and now let's actually let's see if I can just make the horizon a bit closer to the top of the image just by clicking and dragging all of these and to make sure it stays straight. And you know sometimes all the all of these lines can be a bit uh, distracting so if you've got your navigator window open you can have a look over here and just see how it's looking. Um, and I think that's actually a lot better composition than what I had before. So what I'll do is just hit return to apply this transformation. And now I can compare the uh, the original image with the new version that I've just created by just hiding this uh, background copy layer. So this is before, this is after. And yeah, because we're not really moving things around too much, um, you know, there's going to be minimal pixel uh, pixelation issues, you know, stretching the pixels and whatnot. Um, you know, if you're going to start moving things around a lot, then that might start to become an issue. But, you know, with the amounts that I've shifted things around here, I don't really think there's going to be any problem um, with any uh, pixels sort of losing shape and just looking, uh, you know, just looking bad in the image. It's going to be pretty much undetectable. Um, but actually one thing I have noticed, I think the horizon is still a little bit on the wonk. So let's just add another. All right, let's just do this again. And now I can just move this one down a little bit. Maybe this one up and just a, just a real subtle change there. And that seems to have straightened it out. So yeah, there we go. I mean, this kind of you know, this kind of uh, technique can be used in all kinds of situations to move things around in your frame, um, to make mountains taller. Uh, if you're shooting with a wide angle lens, you can make things, you know, the distant objects taller. Um, you can bring foreground objects closer or move them further away, uh, similar to what I've done here. Um, but yeah, really the sky's the limit. So, you know, I'd encourage you just to kind of have a go and see what that warp transform tool can do for you. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more and uh, you know get access to a whole bunch of video courses and tutorials and weekly Photoshop challenges and the uh, Photo Mastery Club uh, community forum and also get personal one-on-one -on -one photography and Photoshop coaching from me, then there's a link just below this video. If you're on YouTube, it'll just be in the description or if you're on the blog, uh, it'll just be immediately below the video. Uh, there's a link that you can click where you can go and find out how to become a Photo Mastery Club member. So yeah, go ahead and uh, click that link now and hopefully I'll see you inside the members area.